Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Muskogee Creek National Council Emergency Session. Today is Thursday, April 14, 2022. Time is 10 p.m. My name is Speaker William Lowe, and I call this meeting to order. At this time, I would like to ask Representative Daryl Proctor to say our invocation. Gracious God, Father Lord, thank you for this day and allowing us to be here today as we come together to the nation's business. I pray to be with us and give us the knowledge and wisdom to do the nation's business today and its decisions that are made for the betterment of our nation, Lord. So we come together today. I thank you for everything that you do for us, and I pray for the ones who has, has lost loved ones. Lord, in, in this time of need, and also for this upcoming few days, Lord, for this time that we think about you, Lord, and thank you for it for the to do for us. This is going to pray. Amen. 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 Hello, Representative Proctor. Roll call. National Council Secretary, Alicia Strobel. Speaker William Lowe. Here. Galen Cloud. Here. Mary Crawford. Joyce Steer. Present. Patrick Freeman. Here. Sandra Golden. Present. Leonard Gouge. Here. Nelson Harjo. Nelson Harjo. Joseph Hicks. Here. Randall Hicks. Here. Robert Huft. Present. Anna Marshall. Present. Charles McHenry. Here. Thomas Senior Osborne. Present. Daryl Proctor. Here. Mark Randolph. Present. Mary Crawford. Nelson Harjo. Speaker, you have 14 present, two absent. 14 present, two absent. That constitutes a quorum. All business transacted will be valid. On to order of business. TR 22-070, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the principal chief to execute a United States Department of Interior Indian Affairs National Indian Oil and Gas Energy and Mineral System End User License Agreement. Sponsor, Representative Mark Randolph. Motion to adopt. Representative Mark Randolph makes a motion to adopt. Second. Seconded by Representative Joe Hicks. Discussion. Representative Randolph. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, can we give some time to Mr. Je Jesse Allen, please? Yes, sir. Jesse, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Speaker. Uh, this resolution is for a, a user license agreement for a database through the Department of Interior, and it's only available to it's specifically made for tribal governments throughout the uh, throughout the nation, and it's in coordination. So they provide energy data, pipeline data, electrical grid data, and it coordinates in a GIS uh, format, and it also um, integrates with our uh, realty uh, office, so we can get a true sense of um, natural resources and um, energy. Uh, infrastructure on tribal lands. Um, so uh, they recently, it's it, it, previous years we've uh, applied or tried to get this program and recently they have acquired and updated the data for the Muscogee Creek Nation Reservation. And so that's why it is available uh, to us at this time. And so be, because it is uh, between a, a government entity or being this legislation, uh, to the council. And I was also like to mention that this is a, a free service uh, to the nation. Thank you, sir. Uh, Jesse, I know I don't think Ms. Michelle Cachet is online, but can you speak to the, yeah. to the opportunity of taxation, please? Exactly. So this will provide a production data as well for the oil and gas um, wells located within the reservation. Uh, so we can use that as a as a resource to identify those wells, what the production is, who the operator is, and we can share that information with the tax commission to enact uh, taxing opportunities uh, on those wells. 
Thank you, sir. Do we have any questions, comments from council representatives? Any questions or comments? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Mark Randolph? Yes. Kaylin Cloud? Yes. Joy Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? You call me, Alicia? Yes. Randall. Yes. Robert Huft? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Hilda Osborne? Yes. Carol Proctor? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. TR 22-070 is adopted. TR 22-073, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the principal chief to submit a 2022 tribal energy development capacity TEDC grant application. Sponsor, Representative Mark Randolph. Motion to adopt. Representative Mark Randolph makes a motion to adopt. Second. Seconded by Representative Charles McHenry. Discussion. Speaker, can uh, we call on Jesse Allen again, please? Yes, sir. Jesse, please. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I also have uh, Zach uh, Harjo and Micah White on this legislation. I'd like to give some time for, uh, for Micah to speak on this. Yes, sir. Micah, are you on? Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir, we can. All right. So uh, as you know, we have been working on the development of the TUA, which was passed and established in December. And this grant in particular is looking at a phase three business plan study for that tribal utility authority, specifically focusing on electricity infrastructure, uh, rate planning and design, and looking at the expenses and potential savings and projects for the nation to pursue um, coming up over the next year if it gets awarded. So uh, that's the general gist of it. The grant application requires that we have a specific tribal resolution authorizing uh, the application to be submitted. Great. Okay. All right. Do you have any comments, questions, council representatives? Comments or questions? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Mark Randolph? Yes. Kaylin Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Hutt? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Senior Hola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. TR 22-073 is adopted. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to recognize our guest. We have Principal Chief David Hill, Second Chief Dale Beaver, and Chief of Staff Jeff Five. Five, good Lord, that mercy. I almost got, almost got through it, but I just wanted to welcome they all here with us in this office. So uh, thank you gentlemen for being here. My apologies, Jeff, goodness, goodness, goodness. Next item on the agenda, TR 22-075, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the principal chief to submit a 2022 energy and mineral development program EMDP grant application. Sponsor, Representative William Lowe. Speaker, I make a motion to adopt. Representative Joseph Hicks makes a motion to adopt. Seconded by Representative Darrell Proctor. Discussion. Uh, Micah, can you speak to this matter as well, or Jesse? Yes, sir. Uh, this is Micah again. Um, so on the EMDP, it, it's a similar application process. It requires the tribal resolution and authorizing the application. Um, for the EMDP grant itself, um, our proposal on that is 
to analyze the tribal lands that we have in both trust and hopefully uh, fee simple as well. Looking at what um, oil and gas resources are available that may be undeveloped, underdeveloped, uh, and ways that we can leverage that to its maximum potential for the nation. Um, so Jesse, I don't know if you have anything that you wanna to add to that, but that's the general gist of the proposal for that one. So um, I think this is a, it's a study that, that, that's needed you know, for the nation and uh, we can utilize uh, this grant to, uh, to cover their services um, you know, from a, a geological perspective, from a, uh, um, you know, land perspective, uh, from a, uh, you know, analysis, a natural resource uh, perspective study on that. And this is also kind of ties into the, uh, to the uh, previous legislation about the uh, NioGEMS uh, database. So it all kind of flows together so we can develop a comprehensive natural resources uh, management plan, you know, for the betterment of the, of the nation. One other thing. Yes, One other yes. thing I'd like to add on that is that um, this is particularly going to look at also um, accessing wholesale markets on these as well, rather than just specifically retail. Um, so we're going to be pulling in a lot of the other resources and um, things that the tribe has in place already. So great. All right. Do we have any comments, questions, council representatives? <laughs> comments or questions? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huft? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Carl McKinney? Yes. Thomas St. Nicola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Annalyn Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouch? Yes. Nelson Harjo? Yes. Speaker, you have 15 in favor, zero against. 15 in favor, zero against. TR 22-075 is adopted. NCA 22-040, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation amending MCNCA Title 14, Chapter 2, Subchapter 2 of the Criminal Offenses Code of the Muscogee Creek Nation, authorizing creation of Section 2-206 entitled An Assimilative Crimes Act, incorporating Oklahoma's criminal code and the criminal codes of those municipalities existing within the reservation boundaries of the Muscogee Creek Nation. Sponsor, Representative William Lowe. Speaker, I make a motion to postpone indefinitely. Representative Joseph Hicks makes a motion to postpone indefinitely. <clears throat> Seconded by Representative Beryl Proctor. Discussion. Hearing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huff? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Sandy Hola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Alan Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? <clears throat> yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouch? Yes. Nelson Harjo? Yes. I agree. I have 15 in favor, zero against. 15 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-040 is postponed indefinitely. <clears throat> NCA 22-048, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation amending Title 14, Chapter 2, Subchapter 1 of the Criminal Offenses Code of the Laws of the Muscogee Creek Nation, authorizing creation of Section 2-114, a Supplemental Crimes Act, Sponsor, Representative William Lowe. Speaker, make a motion to adopt. Representative Joseph Hicks makes a motion to adopt. Second. Seconded by Representative Darrell Proctor. Discussion. At this time, I would like to give the council's general counsel, Kyle Haskins, some time. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Last Tuesday, when we met with regard to the preceding legislation, there were a number of very constructive comments that were made, and I appreciate the indefinite postponement of that legislation. After that meeting, uh, I redrafted this legislation. 
Uh, I removed the word assimilate. I removed any reference to the state of Oklahoma. I removed any reference to municipalities. Uh, then I circulated a, another draft and Mr. Williams got on the phone and uh, as well as many others, including A.G. Weisner and, and other interested parties. Uh, comments were made, additional revisions were made. It, it is my understanding and they had very good comments. And in fact, we did add a provision that uh, kind of freezes in time this uh, suppl supplementation of our laws to the laws as they exist on January 1st of 2021. So that avoids any controversial laws passed after that date um, that people might be arguing that we should enforce. But again, this comes back to the same issues. We have a number of gaps. Uh, A.G. Wisner had kind of taken an informal poll of both Light Horse and also the prosecutors in their office. And I'm sorry I didn't write down the number, but it was either 34 crimes or maybe 38. And I apologize, I just don't remember. But nonetheless, there are a number of crimes out there that we could immediately identify. And for everyone that I think we can immediately identify, I believe that there are others. Uh, I think the agreement was after we had the meeting that this is appropriate. Uh, I think there, there's a consensus that needs to be done. Uh, after the final set of revisions were made, uh, Mr. Williams did contact me back and he was under the belief that we should insert uh, the name Oklahoma back in and make it clear that we are adopting or supplementing our laws with Oklahoma laws. I also have to try to be cognitive of the desires of you know, the persons that are very strict sovereignty advocates. Uh, so I, I did not add you know, the state of Oklahoma back in. I left it with the adoption of you know, those legal entities, those governmental entities that exist within our jurisdiction. Uh, Mr. Williams also commented about <clears throat> not wanting any reference or any ability to adopt municipal law. But part of the reason that we created this code was because the dog issue that arose in Broken Arrow. There are a number of municipalities that simply have adopted Oklahoma law. Other municipalities have written their own laws. I felt like, or I feel like leaving it as it exists, uh, it allows our prosecutors to pick uh, in, in those circumstances and make sure that we are covering all of those issues so we don't end up in the paper again for two weeks or more for some uh, dog related issue. But in any event, uh, I appreciate you all and your patience and the Supplemental Crimes Act does fill those gaps. Uh, I believe that it is in the best interest of the nation and gives us the opportunity to prosecute those crimes that may arise. Certainly, it's intended to be temporary. I hope that we get laws drafted that replace all those gaps. I will be thrilled when the day comes that we no longer need this uh, supplemental law. And with that, unless there's any questions. Thank you, sir. Do we have any questions, comments from council representatives? Comments or questions? Speaker? Yes, Representative Randolph. Uh, can we give some time to the Attorney General? Is she on the line? Yes, Attorney General Wisner, are you, are you on, ma'am? Um, yes, sir. And uh, Council, I, uh, I'm here. I uh, received the most updated uh, version that Kyle had prepared. Uh, just a moment. Okay, good morning. I received the uh, the most recent version from Kyle, and after having a review of that, as well as looking at our criminal codes and uh, what we have in place, um, I actually I feel satisfied in not seeing the uh, the name state of Oklahoma within the statute, uh, within the language of the act. Um, I would prefer not to give. Uh, give due credit. However, I think that within here, it is recognized that that is the applicable law. My concern um, is, is more of um, an, a daily application of this. So I think that within our light horse policies and procedures, we will discuss with them um, and re, uh, reassure that the applicable law will be as follows in according with this act. Our very first um, application of law is going to be the Muskogee Nation Criminal Code. And those will be looked at first. If there is something missing, then the second, uh, the second 
applicable law is going to be the statutes of the state of Oklahoma. And then if there is uh, still a missing issue that they would otherwise charge, at that point, we would look to the municipalities and um, applicable law there. But I think within the policies and procedures of Light Horse, um, it's not a pick and choose as to what you want, but if there's Muscogee Nation law, then it will be utilized. And it, we're not immediately going to state law. And I think that this is a, an important part to point out because this is going to be a training mechanism within all of our cross deputized partners um, so that they recognize that Muscogee Nation law will be utilized first and foremost. And then as a secondary, we would look to either state or municipalities for applicable law. And I think making sure that not only our light horse recognizes this, uh, the, uh, the application of law, as well as the process and the order of law, not only for our light horse, but for our cross deputized partners so that they will know um, what laws to use and how to apply them. Thank you, ma'am. Do we have any other comments, questions, council representatives? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Joseph Hicks. Yes. Randall Hicks. Yes. Robert Huff. Yes. Anna Marshall. Yes. Charles McHenry. Yes. Thomasine Yehola Osborne. Yes. Carol Proctor. Yes. Mark Randall. Yes. yes. Galen Cloud. Yes. Mary Crawford. Yes. Joyce Steer. Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Nelson Harjo? Yes. Speaker, you have 15 in favor, zero against. 15 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-048 is adopted. On to announcements. Do we have any announcements, council representatives? I would like to announce there is a resource fair at reintegration today from 10 to two. I hope we can all make it down there if you can. We also have a major competitive employee egg hunt at noon today here at Old Mogi. So please grab your baskets and join us out there. Any other announcements, council representatives? Adjournment, on to adjournment. Representative Daryl Proctor makes a motion to adjourn. Second. Seconded by representative Joe Hicks. Voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none opposed, we are adjourned. Benediction. Representative Charles McHenry, could you please say our benediction, sir? Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise your holy name, giving thanks, Father, for this day, day that you've blessed us with, the life that you've given us, Father. We just thank you, Father, for the time that we're able to assemble ourselves and conduct the business of our nation, Father. We pray that the decisions that will be made, Father, today were led by your spirit, Father, that you will bless these decisions, Father, that were made, Father. Continue to bless our nation, bless our citizens. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hello, sir. Amen. We are adjourned at 10.23 a.m. Everyone have a great day. <laughs>